afternoon baseball here on the show. Ought to be a good one here between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Milwaukee Brewers. It's interleague baseball next on the show. Brandon Woodruff, the Mississippi native, will be on the mound in this one. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, this is a very unique pitcher. He is really tough to hit when runners get into scoring position, and that's one of the reasons why he doesn't give up many runs. We'll see if he can continue to do that in this one. So here's Kevin Kiermeyer, and we are ready for some daytime baseball. Leading off the afternoon for Tampa Bay, the center fielder. He's ready. Here's Kevin the first offering. Kiermeyer. A fastball off the plate away. It's ball one. Dan Dero, these Brewers, as they begin play here this afternoon, they were losers last time out, but still in a decent groove as they'd won four or five prior to that. Yeah, Matty, the last game, I, I, they, they, they got to wash that down the drain. They got absolutely boat raced by a big margin. They got to put that behind them, show up to the yard today looking to fight. Everything changes once the first pitch is thrown. Wow, that's the way to kick off a day at the ballpark right there. Leadoff hitter, and he puts the pitcher on his heels right out of the gate with a leadoff double. It's hard to get settled into a game as a pitcher when you're dealing with the runner in scoring position one batter into the game. Coming to the plate now, Jose Martinez. And there's a look at his home and road splits so far this year. Ball one as he lays off below the zone. And there are the umpires working this one. Falling balls and strikes is Mr. Patrick Johnson. You know, D-Roll, Patty Johnson, you know, decent strike zone, but isn't always super consistent. I think that's one of the things that irritates players and pitchers. Yeah, you're going to see a few glares, not only from the offensive guys, but maybe the guy on the mound as well. He needs to be a little bit more consistent. 3-0 and to him now. From the belt, the pitch, and he misses there for ball four. So runners are at first and second now with nobody out. Batting third, the right fielder, Austin Meadows. At the plate, Austin Meadows. Great chance to drive in a run here in the early going. Becomes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Little traffic on the base pass right here, but one pitch away from getting a double play and getting right back into control. On its way, the 0 1 pitch. Kiermeyer at second, Martinez at first with no outs. Hit hard to the right side. A diving effort here as he gets a glove on it. On the recovery throw is in time to get the out at first. What a heads up play. That is four. The tough evasion. Number eight. So here's the cleanup hitter, Brandon Lau, looking to stay hot. He's been a real threat at the plate the last week or so. First pitch coming. Here it is. Nope. Second and third here, one man out. Up top, it's 2-0. Oh. Hey, you want to talk about being in a zone? This guy's been raking lately, and it all starts with his pitch selection. Two great takes, and he's almost daring the pitcher. Just go ahead and challenge him. Too high, and it's 3-0. This is a spot you like to be in as a good hitter. Runners in scoring position and count leverage in your favor. The 3 0 is offered at and missed for the first strike. Hit hard on the ground towards second. Reined in. Only play is going to be at first, so that will go as an RBI that brings home the opening marker of the ballgame. That really good team at bat right there, right? Mm -hmm. Just put the ball in play. Mm -hmm. He does this, that, gets the ground ball, and brings home the first run of the game from third. From the stretch. First pitch fastball in there for a called strike. Mm -hmm. 
behind 0-2 now. Now the 0-2. And, and he fouls this one off. Men on third with two down. Another one sent foul. in the dirt and block behind the plate. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to one and two. Oh. To two balls and two strikes now. Boy, that was an awfully close pitch right there. I know if I'm on the mound, I want that pitch called the strike. That's right. And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. Rays will settle for just the one. On now to the bottom of inning number one. The Rays are out in front, one to nothing. Yanni Chirinos is on the mound for game two. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, this guy's done a real good job on the year keeping the opponent's batting average down. Both righties and lefties coming into this one, hitting under 250 against this guy. He's been good all season long. Standing in, Lorenzo Kane. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Now the pitch. Down and away, one ball and no strikes. And guys, the Rays, as they begin play here this afternoon, they come in looking to make it two in a row as they were winners last time out. Yeah, guys, after the first four games on this road trip, they find themselves 2-2, two and two, kind of par for the course. But they got to find a way to play a little bit better today, kind of turn the tide and get it working in a positive direction. You know, D-Row, the old school thinking sometimes is when you're going through a bad streak like this guy, any way you can get on a little jam shot, even though it wasn't pretty, maybe this could get this guy finally going. Yeah, I can't tell you how good that had to feel right there. There's moments where you slap that donut off your bat, you don't even want to walk to home plate. You're scuffling so bad. Outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. Nobody out, runner on first. Now a splitter, and he lays off a ball and a strike. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Swinging a ball hit on the ground. Fielded cleanly to second for one, but no real shot at two as he's safe easily at first. So that one wasn't quite hit sharply enough to turn two. Yeah, choppers like that make it really tough. You can't make the ball get to you much faster, so the key is making sure you field it cleanly and at least get one, which they did there. And here's Christian Yelich now, looking for better results than last night when he went 0 for 4 in that one. Strike one to start the at-bat. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. Hey, you know the pitcher right now, he's looking for that best friend, that double play ball. This is where you have to really be disciplined at the plate and make sure that you get a pitch that's above the knees that you can get in the air. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Runner at first here, one man out. Ball three, not close with the sinker that time. We could see the runner in motion here on a 3-2 count with one out. There's a pretty good chance he's going to get a pitch to swing at, and if not... And he'll make the catch. Oh, check that! He didn't look it into his glove, and the ball drops in. Let's take another look at just a textbook swing right there. Good weight transfer, good hands to the ball, solid contact, and great extension through the ball. Yeah, that's about as pretty as a swing gets. Nice look at it there from our camera guys as well. And that'll bring up Keston Gira as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. High and deep to left. This one's got plenty of distance. And that one is gone! So a three-run blast to straightaway left. Home run number 15 for him thus far. And with it, they've left in front now 3-1. to one. 
this is exactly what you want your offense to do, to get your fans involved. Bottom of the first inning, let's get it started early with a homer. So here is Avisayo Garcia. As you check out his righty-lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right-handers. Try to check it, and it's 0-1. And it's 0-2 to Avisayo Garcia. Into the corner and slicing foul. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Meadows is over to his right as he puts this one away. Two down. Batting six. The third baseman. Eric. Sogard. Here's Eric Sogard. He was hitless in the shutout last night. First pitch of the at bat. And this is low ball one. Torinos has a reputation as a strike thrower, although that doesn't often result in a ton of strikeouts. A typical start may find him with a low walk total and the ball in play a lot. Matty, he's what they call today one of those pitch-to-contact kind of guys. He has good stuff, not great stuff. He relies a lot on his defense. And one of the keys, he's not afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. With that said, he needs some defense behind it because he's not going to get a whole lot of swings and misses. And here's one that barely misses off the inside corner. Two and two. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Left fielder is on the move. He gets there to make the catch, and that ends the inning. But three in the inning for the Brewers on the strength of this three-run home run. Second inning coming up. It's now three to one, Milwaukee. Digging in, Willie Adamas. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs. But it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. And no swing, apparently. Ball one. Hey, this guy's nasty on the mound. And to check swing and not chase that one puts himself right back in the count. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Kane is under it. One out. Batting seven. The third baseman, number two. Yandy Diaz. Standing in, Yandy Diaz. As he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Here's the pitch. Four at the side. One out, nobody on. Hit hard to third. Sogard is there. And an offline throw, but he just does get back to the bag for the putout. Well, I think he got away with one right there. It was a fastball right down the middle. And he hit it hard, but he couldn't elevate it at all. Would have been a different story if he did. Stepping up to the plate, Josh Fuentes. He'll work on keeping this top of the second alive. Here's the first pitch to him. Here's a breaking ball, but it's laid off and doesn't find the zone. Hey, I hope that call doesn't throw him off his game right here. He's been pitching one heck of a game, and I'd hate to see the umpire getting his head right now. Count now a ball and a strike. Two out, nobody on. Two balls and a strike to the Rays' first baseman. You know he's probably cheating on that inside pitch after he got jammed earlier. If you're on the mound right now, you're going to try to hit that outside corner, and there's a pretty good chance you'll get him to roll over something. The 2-2. Two -two. Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. Swung on and missed, and that's the final out of the inning. Rays go in order, one, two, three. And it remains a 3-1 ball game. 
Last half of the second set to go. And in next, the switch hitting power bat of Justin Smoke. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. Meadows has it, and there's one away. Batting it. The catcher. Manny. Stepping in, Manny Pina. And there you see his righty-lefty splits and how they've played out so far this season. Sinker to open the A-B in there for strike one. Bases are empty, one man out. And he gets him to swing through that one. He's in control, 0-2. Man, when you're struggling at the plate, that pitcher smells blood in the water. He's coming right after you, trying to end it quick. Martinez is in his tracks now as he makes the catch for out number two. Batting nine, the pitcher. Roger. Next to hit will be the pitcher, Brandon Woodruff. He'll get to take his first cuts here. He's set. Here it comes. That's a ball. Lays off one and zero. Oh. Bases are empty here with two men out. Grounded up the first baseline, but a foul ball, one and one. Weak grounder back to the mound. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. Gone in order of the Brewers, but they hang on to a three to one lead. Leading off the inning, Yanni Chirinos. And they'll need him to get something going here. Here's the pitch. Now a fastball to start the third. That misses. It's ball one. That's inside. 2-0. and oh. In this situation right here, I'm protecting my pitcher from himself. I know he wants to swing the bat and let the boys know in the clubhouse that he can do his job, but I'm probably putting a take sign on right here. And he'll put this one away for the first out of the inning. Now that and with one away, it's time to check the standings in the NL Central as you see where the Brewers find themselves entering action today. Digging in for his second at bat, Kevin Kiermeyer. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Well, that backdoor breaking ball just missed right there. It's a very effective pitch. If you can hit the outside corner of that pitch, it's unhittable. One and one. Fouled off. Third inning here. Three to one our score. And it's fouled away. He got a mistake right there, but missed it. Can't foul that pitch off in a big spot. 0-2 count. Heater caught too much of the zone. Nope. Tough pitch to lay off there, but he did, and it's even up at two and two. Man, that's one of those. How could you not swing at that one? A good take there on that pitch. The 2 2. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Wow, this guy's mowing right through this lineup right now, but that's what happens when you now don't get a chance to see a pitcher very often. Okay. That's one of the things that are helpful when you're pitching in interleague games. It's always a good advantage for the pitcher because the hitters don't get to see that guy very often. At the plate, Jose Martinez, as he will take a look at a fastball in there as that strike zone expands just a little. It's 0 1. 0-2, the count to Jose Martinez. Two out, nobody on. Can't quite get the low outside corner there. It's one and two. Boy, he sped him up in this at bat. Now it's time for the changeup. This guy's got a good one, and he hasn't thrown it yet in this at bat. Tried to hold up there. Appeal down to first, and no swing. It's ball two. The 2-2. Two -two. Grounded to third. Sogard has it. Throw on to smoke at first, and the side is retired. So nothing happening this time around. We'll move on to the bottom of inning number three. Milwaukee leads it three to one. 
And in to hit next is Lorenzo Cain as we move on to the bottom of inning number three. The center fielder. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Line drive to center field. But this is unfortunately right at him in center field as he takes it in for the first out. And with one away, time for a check of the standings as you see where the Rays stand in the American League East. Here's Brock Holt now. Here comes the first pitch. Upper part of the zone there, but taken for a strike. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. Ball two with a sinker that runs off the inside. Brewer's shortstop ahead with a three and one count. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike and now he's got the count in his favor three and one. Now a slider here but this will miss off the plate away and it's ball four. You know it takes a lot of discipline to watch a pitch like that go by but on a three one count he had the luxury of being a little bit more selective up there. Good take and a walk is the result. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Sinker gets the outside for a strike. Hey, the way this guy on the mound's been struggling to find his own, I'm not mad at the guy taking the pitch. Nope, that's the ball. And that misses one and one. I got a ball Great one game play. plan so far by this offense. They're not chasing any of those breaking balls out of the zone. The second for one. Relay to first in time. And just like that, this side is retired. None left for Milwaukee. And it's still three to one. Back here in Milwaukee at Miller Park as we check in with Heidi Watney. Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. Yes, they've only scored one run, but he said they've done a great job of forcing the pitch count up. And he thinks that's going to lead to more offense for them as this game goes on. Okay, thank you, Heidi. All set for the start of the inning, and Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. Things not looking very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. High and tight here to begin the inning. It's ball one. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. That's a pitch he'd like to have back. You're not going to see very many pitches like that from a pitcher of this quality. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back to take a swing at it. The one two. That's ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Fouled away. Oh, and he misses it. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. Now that number eight. Now at the plate, Brandon Lau. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. Now a fastball that couldn't quite find the zone. It's ball one. Man, this guy has retired a whole slew right now. I think what he needs to do is just stay focused and keep attacking the game plan like he has up to this point because everything he's done has worked. Now the 2-0 home. Outside, 3-0 now. I love the ability to hold up right there, especially with count leverage. I know you want to get aggressive in the strike zone, but he was able to notice that that wasn't his pitch. Three to one is our score here in inning number four. Yanked high and deep down the line in right. And it's a foul ball. You can definitely tell with that foul off right there that he's picking up spin on this pitcher's off speed stuff. Maybe expect a fastball on this next one. And he'll try to hold back, but he won't be able to as that's ruled a swing, and there are two away now. 
A lot of the indecision back. there on that check the swing, and that's something you see quite a lot on three and two. When the difference between striking out and drawing a walk in can be an inch or two, it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. Now a big fastball, and he's well behind it with the swing. Awfully close with the slider there, but it's one and one. Now the pitch. And he pulled up in time, but it's a cold strike two. The one two offering looked like a slider that time, but it's two and two. Pitch on the way. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Kane is after it. He gets there to make the catch, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the Rays. Score holds. It's three to one. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And standing in is the power hitting second baseman, Keston Hiura. And that last at that when he went deep, he turned around. To... There's a drive high in the air and deep to left center field. Solo shot here to left center field, his second of the game, and the Brewers have moved to a 4-1 to lead. Second home run of the game right there. He is locked in at the plate. You hear so many of today's players talk about rhythm and timing. Well, he is perfectly on time in the heart of the zone. Now so here's Abisayu Garcia. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. That swung on and missed. We're even at 1 and 1. Well, it's been a rough one so far. Four runs through three innings. It's about time to get that pitch count down. Or... Swing, and this is also hit well. Out to deep center. And he's going to have room to put this one away, and that's the first out. The third baseman, number seven, Eric Sogard. At the plate, Eric Sogard. One run in and one gone so far in this inning. And he'll try to crowd him there to start the at-bat. It's 1-0. and oh. Four runs, four hits, and no errors on the Milwaukee line score so far. Rolled slowly down the first baseline. Looked like he was cheating the heater right there. A little bit too far out in front. Got to find a way to keep his hands back. A little bit outside. Two and one. All even now. Two and two. Line toward the alley in left center. And that's a base hit. One for two in his first couple of plate appearances. Well, Matt, as we take a look at his line here, he might not know all the specifics, but he knows he hasn't been pitching all that well in this one. Sometimes it happens. You start a game and never completely get into that rhythm. Here's Justin Smoke now. As he'll take a look at ball one. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. 1 and 1 the count to the Brewers' first baseman. 1 and 1. The 1 1 home. Takes a pitch for strike number 2. Can't come out of his game plan right here. He knows he's a known sinker baller. I know it was a four seamer right there, but get back to that two seam. It's what his MO is. So it's a runner at first with two gone. And up next is the catcher, Manny Pena. And this pitch is taken on the inner half for strike one. Line down the left field line. But this is going to get foul. Nothing in two count. And the pitch lifted down the line in left. And no one can get there. It's a foul ball. 
four runs, five hits, and no errors on the Milwaukee line score so far. And he'll try to get him to chase the fastball there, but he lays off one and two. Popped him up. Diaz is there to make the catch, and the side is retired. But the Brewers tack on, courtesy of this solo home run. We played four. It's now four to one, Milwaukee. Digging in to try it again, Willie Adamas. He's in to get things going here in inning number five. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. On the move is Garcia. He gets there and makes the play for the first out. Now batting the third baseman, Yandi Diaz. So striding in, Yandi Diaz. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Here comes the first pitch. Ball. Damn. Starts to go around, but the home plate umpire says he held up ball two. Fifth inning here in a four to one ball game. Three oh, and oh now. Well, he was definitely looking fastball here, and he got one, but that was good discipline to lay off and get himself into a 3 0 count. Line drive to center field. Keen is there now, and he has it two gone. Now batting the first base. Josh Fuentes. Into the box now, Josh Fuentes. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. You know, you think it's an eight-hole hitter right there. You shouldn't be taking that fastball, and you're right. But when you got the pitcher hitting behind you, you sometimes sit off speed because that's the pitch you're usually going to get. The pitcher does not want to get beat by you, and he's not afraid to walk you and hand it over to an A.B. against the pitcher. Now the 2-1. Waves and misses for strike number two. Bases are empty here with two men out. Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. Rounded down the third baseline. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. And an off-speed pitch. Swung on and missed. And with that, the side is retired. Rays go in order. One, two, three. They trail it four to one. Ryan Braun will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. Number eight, Ryan Braun. And here's a called strike to the 36 year old veteran. It's nothing in one. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. Braun, a California-born ball player. He's in the midst of his 14th Major League season, so I guess you could say baseball has been good to him. Yeah, and that's the name of the game with this guy. You don't hang around 13 years. I always say this. You show me a good teammate, I'll show you a guy who opens the door every day, and you know exactly what you're getting. The consistency this guy has had can't go unnoticed, and he's had an amazing career. He had him on the ropes right there. Count leverage, two strikes against the batter. He's going to have to put that in the memory bank because that guy made a nice two-strike approach right there, made a nice two-strike adjustment. In now is Lorenzo Kane. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. A hit and two at-bats for him at this point in the ballgame. Now a chopper to first might only get one. One there. Onto the pitcher covering in time. It's a double play. 
That's good athleticism here by the pitcher getting off the mound. He gets the ball to first and then hustles his way over to the bag to help him wrap up the tough 3-6-1 double play. Coming to the plate now, Brock Holt. It was a walk in his last trip. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Inside with the slider, and that'll back him up a bit. Two out, nobody on. He pulls this one into right. That gets down, and the inning continues. Uh, hey, d -Roll, that's just what you want to do. Keep the pressure on. He's given up a couple of runs early already in this game, and now he gives up a two-out single. Yeah, no chance right there. You want to make this guy work. You want to try and get into their pen as quick as possible. And if two-out knocks are the answer, then so be it. Hit down the third baseline. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0-1. One. one for two in the ball game thus far. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Here's his splitter that's taken for a ball one and one. A runner on first with two away. One and two for Christian Yelich. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Brewers strand one, but they lead it four to one. Corbin Burns takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. For the Brewers, number 39, Corbin Burns. Daniel Robertson will grab a bat and lead things off here in the top of the sixth. Robertson. strike at the letters 0 and 1 and you see that average below the dreaded Mendoza line outside for a ball 1 and 1 action now in the Milwaukee bullpen as they'll have a right hander loosen up checks his swing here but he does so in time There's the fastball that gets the lower part of the zone called for a strike. Hey, you want someone sometimes to rattle the bat rack, but also the guy on the mound's got to eat too. They're executing their pitches out there. It's going to be tough to score some runs. Right down Main Street caught him looking. Standing in Kevin Kiermeyer. He's one for two in this one. Here comes the first pitch. Well, all one, no strike. The 1-0 home. Hey. Maybe two too much strike. break on yeah. the slider. Two and one. One out, nobody on. Hey. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. That's the exact spot to lean on as a reliever. As a hitter, you just have to tip your cap and look for the next one. A full count to the Rays center fielder. Jose Martinez waits on deck. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the pen to start this inning. That's back-to-back -back K's, and he's making it look pretty easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. At the plate now, Jose Martinez. No balls and a strike to count. Sixth inning, 4-1 to one is our score. And a good idea to hold off on that swing. It's ball one. And a half swing here, but this is in there for a called strike two.
The one-two. Hit hard towards center. That gets down, and he's got himself a base hit. Hey, guys, I like the execution by the batter there. He got a hanger in the middle of the plate. He could have come unglued, but he didn't. He stayed focused and drove a line drive base hit. Standing in now, Austin Meadows. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. 0-1, here's the pitch. Well, too much tilt on that breaking ball as it misses low. Two out with the man at first. Three and one. Well, this has been a long inning already, and I know he doesn't want it to get any longer. I expect a challenge pitch right here. Swing and a line drive. But this will land foul as he didn't miss by much. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Now a check swing, but that's in there for strike three anyway, and the inning is over. One left for Tampa, and this is still a 4-1 ball game. Chaz Rowe enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Number 52, Chaz Rowe. Keston Hiura will stand in looking for home run number three as we take it back to inning number four. And this was his second home run of the game as he's been dialed in so far in this one. Here's the first pitch to him. Ready with the 0-1. Now here's a line drive that'll make it out into left center, and he's going to have himself a leadoff single. Boy, Dero, there's a case of the outfield defense playing so deep that that ball looked like it was extra bases all the way, but they were able to cut it off. Yeah, not too many times I would agree. I, I, I'd love to hear your take on this as well. The no doubles defense, I, I kind of never understood it to begin with. I felt like the pitcher, if he can execute the game plan, to keep the ball in front of the outfielders, but right there, boy, I was wrong. That worked. He's ready. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And he takes strike three called on the fastball. One gone. The third base, the in seven. now, Eric Sogard. A hit in two tries for him so far. Here's the first pitch to him. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Martinez is there to put it away and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. The first baseman, number 12. So the Justin. switch hitter Justin Smoke steps up. First pitch coming, here it is. And a strike called at the knees, nothing in one. Ah, he just ramps up and gears the fastball by him, 0-2. lifted the other way down the left field line and that'll get down out there for extra bases so now they'll have two men in scoring position following the two out double while wow, this is a perfect example of a wily veteran doing what needs to be done to deliver for his team yeah and just watch this swing instead of trying to do too much with it and pull it he stays inside the ball and is able to smack it to the opposite field for a double to the plate now Manny Pena as the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. No hits to this point. Lifted in the air to center field. Kiermaier is there and he puts this one away for the third out. So a great job there of working out a potential trouble. Brewers strand a couple as they hold on to a four to one lead. Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area. So it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. David Phelps please. will come on now and he'll slide into the seven spot in the lineup following the double switch. 
Jed Jerko will also come on now as he'll move into the pitcher's number nine hold in the order here on that double switch. Number five. Seventh inning ready to roll and set to go is the second baseman, Brandon Lau. First pitch of the at bat. A ball and no strikes. Outside with the cut fastball there, and it's a two ball count. Well, this is a spot you'd like to be in. 2 0, good hitter. He's going to turn it loose right here. And he couldn't pull that one back as he clearly broke the plane to the plate, and that will be ruled a strike. Checks his swing, but this will be strike two call. Half swing here, but it won't matter. It's strike three called anyway, and that's out number one. You know, I'm not quite sure how that strikeout will be scored, looking or swinging. He tried to check his swing, but I'm pretty sure the home plate umpire was ringing him up regardless. Here's the catcher, Luke Maley. As he'll take a look at a high strike that time, it's nothing in one. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Now a check swing, but he holds up in time. Ball one. Uh, tough to get fooled any worse than that. He's in a hole now one and two. Made him look silly with that one. The one two. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. He was looking for a swing and a miss breaker right there, but left that one in the zone that got fouled off. Ball. To two balls and two strikes now. Two two strikes. We're in the seventh now. Four to one our score to this point. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. Well, we've now seen some really good pitching the from these ball. guys on this one. The bullpen has looked sharp and it backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. So now to the plate, Willie Adamas. As he takes a cold strike at the knees, it's 0-1. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. One and one. You know he wants that on the mound, especially if it would have made the count 0 and 2. Didn't get it though, so now you have to make another quality pitch on one and one. And he's behind now as he missed badly on that swing. One and two. Two and two now with two away, and the base is empty. Bases are empty here with two men out. Outside in a full count, three and two. Yandy Diaz would be next. And that one misses. It's ball four. So a two-out walk gives the Rays some hope here in the inning. I know one thing. He earned that free pass right there. He was tempted with some really good pitches, but he stayed disciplined and drew the walk. Corey Knable will get the ball here as he looks to get the final out in the top of the seventh. Number 46, Corey Knable. Yandy Diaz will be the first to greet him here as he stands in with a runner at first and two away. Set and the pitch. One out. Two ball, no strike. A runner on first with two away. Too high, yep. and it's three and zero. Oh. I'm seeing him just a little too amped up out there right now. That's common with hard throwers like him. Running a blazing fastball up there is great, but if you can't harness it, what good does it do you? Taking all the way, and that's what you call a plausible strike there. It's 3-1 and one now. 
stealing that strike on 3-0 was important, but you don't want to miss over the heart of the plate in this situation. I got to believe he's going to be way more aggressive right here. And he misses ball four. So he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces. Oh, man, I think this walk is going to grind at him for a bit. He just missed, and now the inning continues with the man in scoring position. Striding into the box, Josh Fuentes. And, Dan, this could be a real make-or-break situation at this point in the game. Yeah, Matt, at least scoring one run in this inning is so important to them to possibly get back into this thing. Baseball doesn't have a clock, but you only have 27 outs to work with. They're running out of those pretty quick. First delivery to him on the way. Right-hander against right-hander as this is a ball 1-0. I wonder if that call not going his way right there has anything to do with walking the last guy. We all know umpires don't give you much on the corners if you're not throwing strikes consistently. Can't find the zone there as he lays off the breaking ball. A couple strikeouts early in the game, but he's done a much better job in this at bat trying to get ahead and put himself in a good hitter's count. And little doubt about that one. That's in there, and it's 2-1. and one. Hey, it looks like this guy's going to work in the upper part of the strike zone. It'll be interesting to see if this lineup can adjust to the way he pitches. Now the 2-1 pitch. It swung on and missed for strike number two. With runners on base, two outs and two strikes, this is a big next pitch for both sides. Here's one that misses inside, and the counts run full now. Three and two. I don't think he can afford another base runner here. So whatever pitch he feels best about, whichever one he feels most comfortable with, that's the one I expect him to turn to. And he misses again. Ball four. And that's back-to-back -back guys now that have reached base via the base on ball. That's a big no-no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. Now it's the Tampa Bay pitcher, number 52. Now batting, the pitcher, Jan Rowe. Looking to wiggle out of this, here it is. First pitch fastball in there for a called strike. That was a pretty good fastball after he walked the hitter previous. There was a little angry on that heater. Comes set. The 0-1. And this catches the zone as well. It's 0-2 now. Well, you can see he's coming right at this guy, just pounding the ball in the strike zone. He certainly has the advantage now. This guy hasn't even swung the bat yet. And he strikes him out. So a missed opportunity at the plate as he strands three runners and the side is retired. Rays leave him loaded. They trail it four to one. Last half of the seventh here. And set to go is the veteran first baseman, Jed Jerko. Now the pitch. Lifted in the air out towards left center. Kiermaier's got a read on it. And he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. The center fielder, number six, Lovetto King. One away for the Brewers in their half of the seventh. And that'll bring up Lorenzo Cain. And he takes a cold strike, 0-1. Oh now a ball pulled hard but fouled off to the left. Set to deliver on nothing in two. Here it comes. Popped him up. And he'll put this one away in foul territory for the second out. Now batter. Not shortstop. Oh. 
digging in and looking for more. Brock Holt, a hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ballgame. Popped up. Diaz is there. And that retires the side. Three up, three down for Milwaukee, but they lead it four to one. Alex Claudio has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 58, Alex Claudio. So Tampa's batting order turns over and set to go. Kevin Kiermeyer. He got called yeah. out on strikes his last time through. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. This is on the ground over to first. Throw on to first in time, so the leadoff man is set down to open up inning number eight. Up next for Tampa Bay, the left fielder, Jose Martinez. So coming to the plate, Jose Martinez, a hit in two tries so far. Ready with the first pitch, here it comes. Hit out towards second. And into center field as he's aboard with a one-out single. Hey, guys, this, he's not known for being a singles hitter right here, but that's his second yeah, knock right. of the game. The and I'm sure he'll take him, but the guys on the other side of the scorecard might be thinking we really avoided a worse fate. Stepping in now, Austin Meadows. As he'll look at a changeup that drops below the knees for ball one. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Now the 1-0 is a sinker that misses for a ball. Clearly working the bottom of the zone, trying to get a ground ball for a double play. Eighth inning, 4-1 to one is our score. 2-1 and one after the foul ball there. Claudio. 28 years old, he was selected in the 27th round back in the 2010 first-year player draft. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. And he lays off again, ball three. Three one pitch is a slider and he can't pull the trigger. It's three and two now. I think it's a real possibility that they put that run on first in motion. That would help them stay out of that double play that would end the inning, but that's also kind of risky at the same time. And he struck him out. So he's down on strikes for the second time this afternoon. Now better. So Number now it'll eight. be the four hole hitter, Brandon Lau. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Here comes the first pitch. Well, he punched out the last guy, but he didn't get any favors from the blue on the first pitch in this at bat. Probably should be ahead of this hitter instead of behind. Two out with the man at first. A ball and a strike. Might have to change your game. one home line drive to center field Keane is going to have room out there as he puts this away to retire the side Ray's strand just the one and this is still a 4 1 ball game Aaron Luke is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth number 41 Aaron Luke Bottom of inning number eight set to go. And standing in is the veteran outfielder, Christian Yelich. He'll start him here with a changeup, but it's taken for ball one. Lou has seen his role change with those one batter lefty specialists going the way of the dodo as a part of MLB's pace of play initiatives. Oh. 
rounded back up the middle. Adamas brings it in. And no chance on the throw here as he reaches first easily. I know that has to be frustrating from a pitcher's standpoint. But nice execution, nice hustle. Bottom line, nice hustle. Pitcher still one good pitch away from getting a double play. You know, d one of the things you want to do is make quality pitches as a pitcher. And there's not much you can do right there. You make a pretty good pitch, and the next thing you know, you have a leadoff single on an infield ground ball. Behind 0-2 now. Nothing in two count, and the pitch. Fly ball out toward left center field. Left fielder is on the move. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. The left fielder, number 24. Avisail Garcia. Into the box now, Avisail Garcia. And he hasn't quite had the same fortune at the plate as many of his teammates. No hits for him so far. And they'll start things out with a change up here, but this is a bit too tight. It's ball one. On a line to shortstop. And it got there so quickly, the runner didn't get very far from the bag. They settle with just the one out. The third baseman, Eric. Sogard. Ready for another shot now. Eric Sogard. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. First offering on its way. Outside, that's the ball. A runner on first with two away. This pitch is popped up. Maley has a play. And that's the third out. One hit, one left. We've played eight full. The Brewers lead it four to one. Now the skipper's on his way out toward the home plate area. And I believe that means we're going to have a double switch here. Josh Hader comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Now pitching and batting in the sixth spot. Number 71. New inning set to get underway. And next to hit is the catcher, Luke Maley. Listen, it's not easy coming back off of closers, but this guy hasn't been super dependable so far this season. And he's blown several saves up to this point. The 1 0 is looked at for ball number two. The last thing you want to do when you've got a three-run lead in the ninth is give the other guys any sense of hope. It's a good time to challenge here on 2-0, especially since there's a good chance he's taking until he gets a strike. The count now at 2-1. Pitch on the way. I think he held up in time, but that becomes moot as it's a cold strike two. Don't quite know where that one missed, but it's not for me to decide. Three and two. Willie Adamas will be next. And he fouls this one off. He's set. Here's the three and two. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. Well, we'll see a lot of these power arms coming out of the bullpen in these days. But it doesn't make it any less impressive to me. I love watching guys come in and blow smoke right by guys. Into the box, Willie Adamas. As he'll pick on the first pitch and line one back up the middle. And that's a base hit. Well, there's no denying he was all over that fastball. That's what we like to refer to as a little bit of an ambush. O.O. Heater gets turned around. And that will bring in Yandy Diaz as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. The 1 0 home is taken below the zone for a ball. And that misses as well. 3 0. From the stretch. Runners on first with one down.
Now here's a check swing, and they appeal down to first. No swing. So that's ball four. The closer is supposed to slam the door on his opponent, but he left the door wide open with a walk wow. there. We'll see if they can capitalize on it. Ready for another chance? Josh Fuentes. It was a walk in his last trip. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Hey, this isn't going to be an easy save. These guys are making it work for this one. The 1 0 delivery. Left side. And that is through into left field, a base hit. And he is safe at the plate as he's across to make this a 4 2 game now. And now time is called here as their pitching coach is going to pay a quick visit to the mound to discuss how they want to attack things here. Hunter Renfro will be called upon here to hit with the game on the line. Number 11, Hunter Renfro. him with a high fastball but he wouldn't commit it's ball one runners are at first and second with one away hey. cold strike as the slider gets the outside corner hey. and he takes a cold strike too working for the punch out and the offering Swing and a miss, and they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. That's a big strikeout there with the tying run over at first base. Now, with two outs, it becomes a lot more difficult to manufacture that guy home. Probably need a ball in the gap to give him a chance. At the plate, Kevin Kiermeyer as he takes a fastball off the plate for a ball 1-0. Time to start making some quality pitches. He finds himself in a tough spot behind an account with guys on base. Two and one to the Rays leadoff batter. I think it's about time to choke up on that bat and get that foot down. He's awfully tardy right now. Two down, runners at first and second. Ball three, three and one now. And I think he wanted to know where that one was. Every base runner in a close game like this really matters, so you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late. The 3 1. Count full, three balls and two strikes. Now, a crowd announced at a bit over 23,000 comes to their feet. Chopped down the first baseline. Throw the first here in time for the final out, and the Brewers are going to get out of here with a split in this brief two-game series as this ball game is over. Four to two, the final score today. The Milwaukee Brewers get their 20th home win this year. Brendan Woodruff earns his eighth victory of the season as he gives up only one hit in five innings of work. Josh Hader earns the save out of the bullpen, his 21st of the year. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Klesak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vasquez, and you've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com. The final one score for our ball game this afternoon for the victorious Brewers.